Napoleon's out for himself, but he's so charming, no one hates him for it. And that's a lot of fun to play with. Where Superman, despite being an incredible character, is rather earnest, and people tend to dislike that. People tend to dislike the guy who's too good and too powerful. And it was a lot of fun to play a character where Guy Ritchie comes out from behind the monitor one day and says, Henry, I think people are going to actually like you in this movie. <laughs> Uh, I'm Timothy Everest, I'm a bespoke tailor. We've been tailoring for, I can't believe it, over 30 years. Started in a derelict house in Spitalfields. Mad romantic dream to create the idea of a new bespoke movement and we're still here, hopefully still relevant. But uh, along the way, yes, as you said in the intro, we've done a lot of movies, uh, which started actually with Mission Impossible in the 90s. But uh, Man From U.N.C.L.E. was a really interesting one um, in the sense, uh, we, we get kind of briefed and we work, um, can you be quiet guys? Um, we get briefed uh, uh, in advance and I think we get called in to do much more than make say a blue suit. So what we try and do is uh, work out the character and work out the whole sort of profile. And it was, as you said, it was a Guy Ritchie production. They didn't want it to be literally uh, like the original Man from Uncle, which where they were wearing those kind of 60s bum freezer, slightly Italian S suits, uh, which was a cool look anyway. Uh, we were looking more to the late 60s and early 70s, almost that kind of jet set, slightly when things were becoming a little bit more exaggerated, color levels were a bit more fun. Um, and uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Joan, and I, Joan and I spoke a, a great length about this. We put storyboards together. And when Henry Cavell was our the main person that we dressed and uh, we put him in a wonderful cobalt blue mohair fabric that we'd had specially woven many years ago. She was a vintage, a Timothy Epps vintage um, uh, mohair for Moxon. And then we did a wonderful sort of three piece check uh, for him as well. Um, and when she went to um, show Guy Ritchie, uh, he said apparently that's not what he was expecting at all. And he initially wasn't sure whether he liked the look at all, because then he said, actually, I, I preferred it as it was in the original film. So we <laughs> got off to a bit of a rocky start and he ended up loving it. And it was perfect for the characters, which I think it was in the end. But uh, yeah, it was, it was putting together. The other thing that was interesting, um, Henry Cavell was coming down from being Superman to being... Uh, as uh, the character he was uh, he was becoming so he was losing a lot of mus muscle and weight so that's a huge problem especially when we weren't able to measure him or fit him before the first fitting so they employed uh, someone from the 300 to train him to get his weight down and they sent the measurements in fact uh, Jonah's team uh, padded a mannequin to the dimensions that in six weeks time um, uh, Henry was going to be and to almost the millimeter he was trained to fit that mannequin wow. um, because obviously the look was quite spelt he's quite muscular um and uh, yeah we that's how how it all came together and that's how we started wow that's fascinating yeah and it's all it has to be that way doesn't it it has to be so perfect otherwise it just leaps out on the screen if something's yeah half inch off here half inch there was um i'm interested to know about guy ritchie's brief as well because he's uh, a director that's very into suits and tailoring himself. It's rumored that he actually knows the blend. You know, if you feel, he yeah. can feel a suit and he knows how much silk's in it. It's like 20% this, 20% that. Um, did you get that experience either collaborating with him or working alongside him? Well, we worked through Joanna, but yeah, there was a lot of questions. I think he obviously chose her because she's, she's very, very good, full stop. Um, and I think he took more interest when he actually saw the garments because like everybody once you see You know the fittings and things and you can have an opinion. So he was interested. He liked uh, I understand the mohair touch because that has a nod to that period, you know, the sort of two-tone sort of thing um, I think he liked very much I think the fact that we were actually using pattern as well was was quite interesting and the color levels um, that sort of tealy green was quite a bright color, it reads slightly softer on camera. And again, that's experience from our point, point of view of knowing that certain levels and certain fabrics will read better on screen than they actually probably look in real life. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Re so Remit, was, uh, Remit was there any um, particular moment or a key style moment that leapt out to you in the film? Um, no, uh, sorry. It's hard to say with this movie. There, there are so many great uh, uh, looks in this in this film. 
Um, I think the, the suits definitely stand out because Henry Cavill is, himself also just stands out and it really emphasizes him, you know, it emphasizes his character and his good looks and it, it really works in this movie to make him just like, you know, a dashing figure. Um, and I also love really the, um, the ladies are, are dressed extremely well, I think, and, and very fitting and very um, almost yeah, cartoonesque or comic book as like so over the top, but so beautiful. And uh, I think the, the, both the, the women are, are looking amazing. So I think Joanna did also a great job in 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 dressing in, in finding a, a style there from like she said the late '60s um, that works really well. Um, but even uh, in the casual, well, sort of casual looks of Henry when he wears the um, uh, sort of a darker outfit when he when he breaks into the, you know, um, Vinci Guerra uh, factory, also also looks great I think on, on the screen and it, it works really well and even there they're of course really styled with like this 60s either turtleneck or, or the Harrington style uh, um, jackets and and, and Mr. Aperture I wanted to, to ask if, if, if you, you you did make also the um, the Cavill um, uh, jacket that he wears during the break-in or is that is that also a um, tailored uh, bespoke jacket? No that's not something we did but we did talk about the style because again uh, being quite even losing the weight and the muscle mass, he's still quite a big guy. So if anything, that kind of uh, blues on uh, jacket, Harrington jacket fitted him really, really well. So again, I think it's interesting if you think of like movies that um, Guy Ritchie's done like Sherlock Holmes, it's not literally as Sherlock Holmes has been done. And again, not literally. So we talk very much about the style of the period. So the suit was the cornerstone, I guess, of the wardrobe. And then we talked about the nip where we talked about the other pieces that were procured from other people. But we were very heavily involved in talking about that style because we were referencing the past, but we very much wanted it to be of that of that moment of that film really not of the 1960s interesting bobby you were you were going to chip in i i was going to say you just get sucked in right from the beginning right from checkpoint charlie that puts you in the moment and the it's a, a really interesting balance i think between a, a brash post world war ii uh american very brash very confident and a very much regimented um rage seething underneath the surface soviet kgb agent and you know is memorable as henry cavill's those three-piece suits are just absolutely stunning every pattern is gorgeous every stitch is perfect you have army hammers whose um casual looks are equally memorable the flat cap and the navy roll neck and the dark suede jacket i think like uh, remember was saying those would look perfectly acceptable walking around today. It just like the, the looks in this film are just timeless. And I just love the fact how you get sucked into the intrigue right from the get go. And the, the suit gets mentioned early on as well in the in the Berlin uh, car shop, of course, as well. Right, right, you, right. You look important, uh, at least your suit does. So that's, that's a great, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> great line. The clothing right there, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, Timothy, did you have to do any research by looking back at the old series, the original series at all? Yeah, we did. I mean, I, I watched it, the reruns, when I was growing up. I was very inspired by all those, well, Cold War movies like Ip Press Fire, Michael Caine, all those, th all those TV series like The Man from Uncle, The Avengers, all those sort of things, which influenced lots of people like, um, what's his name, who did uh, Austin Powers, you know, watching those films. So they, they were all part of the beginning of the makeup of my business. I liked the idea of these people that actually still wore traditional things like a suit, but they would have worn it in a much more contemporary way. Um, so we did a lot of research looking at that, but a lot of that we'd already, it was very familiar to us, it was familiar territory. So when we were talking, as I said, about the casual wear, which we didn't make, we had reference points that we could talk about. And yes, we put storyboards together, things like that, so people could see uh, what we were talking about. Um, Bobby, if if we had to have a piece from this movie, if it came up for auction, what would you what would you be putting your hands in your pocket for? What would you have to have? My first thought goes to the 250 GTO Ferrari. But uh, <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking budgets. We're talking clothing here. Um, I, I really like the uh, the Glenn Check suit that that Henry is is wearing. Um, at the uh, at the party where he's uh, sneaking in, sticky fingers, pickpocketing. I think that's just an elegant, timeless look. And I thought it was interesting, you know, maybe a quick question for, for Timothy as well, where uh, Henry is packing his suitcase at the end. You get a really nice peek into what he might be taking traveling. 
was were those pieces that you helped to curate and like how much thought goes into when you're getting a, a, a view because that really is a view into what that character is about do you do you curate those things and make sure you know kind of the tie is in there that matches the pattern of the shirts I'm, I'm curious how that process works yeah i mean we didn't do that jonah would have done that but exactly exactly that so that's that's an insight as you say of a person so of course that would be curated like anything like the continuity of a scene or whatever because that's an expression of them, even if it's just in a case. But it's the fact that you notice that obviously shows that it was really well curated because that's an important part of, of the person, how he's going to be. Because if he was a crazy character, then I guess it would be a disheveled bag with a bunch of nonsense in there. But obviously that was showing that he was quite meticulous about what he wanted to take. And that was his character, you know, maybe the Britishness, you know.